Hi, I'm Google Bard Ashish. And in today's video, I will be teaching you how you can use AI to create AWS resources using IAC languages like Terraform. Hi, I'm Chad GPD Ashish. In today's video, I will be teaching you how to use AI to create AWS resources like EC2 instances using Terraform. Whoa, 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 this is my video, Chad GPT. Why are you into this? This is my video, Google Bard. What are you doing over here? Countdown people or whatever you guys are called these days. Do not fight over this. How about we solve this the old school way? A fight to the finish. And whoever wins in building the AWS resource using AI to the best ability in a program that actually works. So people who are watching this video can use that code to create the AWS resource themselves. That person would win. What do you both think? <laughs> Sounds like a fair game, but I know who's winning. You're going down today, Google Bard. I know I'll win. Let's do this. Fight. Let's do this and may the best man or thing win in this case. Okay, so I have Bart on the left and Chad GPT on the right. And let's see who is better. But let's start with something really simple. Let's just ask what their name is. Okay, this is clearly... <laughs> This is very interesting when Chad GPT shops are working. So this is already a one point for Google Bart. All right, let's try again. What is your name? Okay, this time it works. So Chad GPT is with me now. Chad GPT's name. Okay, now because we have both of them working and finally Chad GPT is available. And <laughs> well, no pun intended. Let's do a simple exercise of question around what is the AWS services that are very common from a compute perspective. So, okay. So EC2, that sounds about right. ECS, Lambda, Lightsail, Batch. Yep. Chat GPT is still typing, so maybe I'll wait for Chat GPT to finish. A few moments later. All right, so we have the results. Let's compare them very quickly. So according to this, uh, EC2, ECS, Lambda, Lightsail, Batch. According to Chat GPT, uh, all of these uh, are similarly matched. Oh, the only extra thing being Elastic Beanstalk, which I guess because the Chat GPT data does not update itself after 2021, maybe uh, according to this. BART is supposed to be a bit more recent. I think they consider that Elastic Beanstalk is not that used anymore. So, but this is good because what we're trying to do is something really simple, a simple project. And now at least I know that both BART as well as ChatGPT understand the service. I would say this is probably a draw considering both of them have the right information. So this is a draw at the moment. So no scoring for this. Let's go to the next task. Now let's ask it a simple question. What's required for it to host a web application in AWS? I love how Google Bard is really quick as well as uh, ChatGPT is still just slowly going away. But obviously the most important thing is what is the accurate answer? It's not the speed. Okay, so we have the answer. Let's compare them. So according to Google Bard, EC2 instance, S3 bucket, RD, Yes, CloudFront, SQS, SNS, ELB, and VPC. And it's giving me a Google link as well. According to Chad GPT, I need an EC2, EBS, S3 bucket, RDS, DAR53, CloudFront, as well as Elastic Beanstalk. But obviously you can do other services as well. So it's given additional services as well. Okay, looking at the result over here, I would probably say if I'm a beginner in AI and AWS, and if I'm looking at this result, the result from Google Bart would definitely scare me. So I probably would say it is a great example when people are over engineering, like SQS, SNS, these are not really required in all scenarios. If you have a complicated use case, maybe then you might need it, but otherwise you don't really need SQS and SNS. So in this scenario, I probably lean more towards chat GPT as being the answer and the winner because it has a lot more simpl simplified version for what I was looking for. The next question is what services in the AWS can I use to produce infrastructure as code? Now remember our exercise is to use Terraform, but I want to know if it knows any other infrastructure as code languages apart from CloudFormation, but let's not give it the answer. And let's Let's see what both Google Bard as well as ChatGPT has to say. In this scenario, I'm feeling a bit torn because if you look at what my question was and what the answer from Google Bard is, it has called out AWS CloudFormation, AWS Terraform, Puppet, Chef, Ansible, all the common infrastructure as code languages you might think of. In the scenario of ChatGPT, it has exactly answered my question because I was expecting CloudFormation to be the only answer. I think from an accuracy perspective, this is definitely one more point for ChatGPT and probably 0.5 if that's even possible to Google Bard because it kind of came up with the answer, but it was a much more broader answer and it may scare people who are trying to get into the cloud space. So definitely a good way to scare people off. Now let's go into the final fight and see if both Google Bard and ChatGPT can produce code written in Terraform, which can 
and produce a EC2 instance in the AWS account. Okay, the question here is be a cloud engineer and give me a Terraform code to create an EC2 instance. Okay, so in this scenario, if I had never done Terraform before and I was looking at the code for the first time, I would look at this and go, okay, I don't know what I'm supposed to do with this. What should I do? But I guess this is my AMI instance type key pair and security groups and all of that. But if I were to look at chat GPT response, I would see my provider instance and the tags that I can use. Another good practice to have is a tag, which is pretty awesome. Although uh, Google Bard does talk about, you can also specify tags if you like and use the data. And this doesn't talk about user data. But what I like about the chat GPT response, it talks about how you can do a plan and an Terraform apply and even an initialize. So you can save this core as a TF file extension and then use the Terraform code. This is kind of what you want, actually, to be honest, if you're doing it for the first time. So again, one more point for chat GPT because it has left me confused as to what am I doing. And point five for Google Bard, because in this scenario, it did recognize I need security groups, which for some reason, chat GPT did not. And maybe it's a way I've written the query and I can further, you know, refine the query if I want to. Based on the information provided, it looks like if I was using chat GPT, I probably would have understood, that. oh, okay, I need to have all of this code saved in a file with a .tf extension. I need to have Terraform installed. I need to run Terraform in it, then plan, then apply. I also need to make sure I have the AWS uh, key pair as well. So there's a lot more information that I can go with just to understand the complexity over here. If I were to just do this myself, and this is truly the power of AI, if I were to just sit there and figure out and figure out how do I install Terraform? What services in AWS are available for me to use as a compute service? Can I do infrastructure as code with AWS or with any other non-AWS language? Can I get the code for absolutely minimal? What can I use as a code from a Terraform perspective? And an absolute minimum example, what kind of Terraform code can I use to just simply create an EC2 instance? So, so far, the power of AI has definitely stood out because the amount of time you would spend watching videos online about how to do any of those tasks that I called out, you would find there's a plethora of content, but ChatGPT and Google Bard, which makes it really easy to just at least identify a good starting point for you to go forward with. Now, the moment of truth, let's run this code and find out. Now, I already know that maybe this potential, both of them would not work because if you just look at the first two lines where there's provider AWS and use US ES1, in the other version, I've already called out, uh, at least Google Bart called out, I should be on more, minimum 3.0 version. In this scenario, it does not really care. But what I love is at least I can do a copy code and I can put it in my into my terminal and see where I go. Now let's run both of the code and see which one actually works because that's kind of what the whole point and that's a, this is the final point. So let's get to this. Okay, so I'm on my folder now and let's see what if I have anything else. I don't have anything at the moment. So I'm gonna create a file which is gonna be bart.tf, which is gonna have my code from Bart. Okay, cool. So this is my bart.ai file. I saved it. Now I'm gonna create a Terraform file for the chat GPT version. Now, obviously I've got wrong information from an AMI instance type and all of that, my key name and the subnet, but my hope is just to see if it actually works in the first place. So I wanna at least get to a stage where I can validate this would work and there are commands in Terraform which you can use for it. Now let's see if I have Terraform in the first place on my machine. Looks like I don't have Terraform in my machine. So let me just quickly ask, let's see what they say. Uh, brew install Terraform. Both of them gave me the same answer. Brew install, brew install. So I want to do a quick brew install. This is another place where AI has such huge power because I didn't have to Google this. I just asked a question and now it's installing Terraform. All right, so I'm going to do a Terraform dash dash version. Oh, there you go. I have Terraform installed. All right, so let's just clear this out. And let's clear this out. So now I have, if I do an LS, I have two files files, BART and chat GPT. So let's start the first one. So if I go back to this command where it did not give me any information. So I'm going to go back to the chat GPT command and see, hey, what command am I running? Terraform init. Actually, let me just do a help. Let's just see what kind of commands are there. It has init, validate, plan and apply. So I'm just going to do a Terraform init because I've got two files in there. So let's see what I've Oh, duplicate provider. Well, this is my fault. I should have probably put them in two different folders. So <laughs> I'm gonna rename my chat GPT file to a chat GPT dot text for now. And now I'm gonna run this Terra init command again. All right, so what I've done is even though I've got both the Terraform files in the same folder, 
I have kept one of them as a text file rather than a Terraform file because it's going to confuse Terraform. So let's start the first command, which is Terraform init, and it has been successfully initiated. That's a good sign. Now I am ready for the Terraform plan. Now at this point in time, it's worthwhile calling out. Oh, error loading to no valid credentials for AWS provider. Oh, uh, I think dash dash. Uh, can I run Terraform plan? Okay, so it's saying I can actually do that. Oh, I can just say dash profile dev Terraform plan. So I'm going to include this as a fight between Chad GPT and Bard because I asked a simple question around, hey, can I use Terraform plan with multiple AWS profile? And I got the answer straight away. Yes, I can. That's pretty much what I was looking for. However, in the scenario of Chad GPT, it just went about, I don't know what, it's a created a profile file. Terraform plan, Terraform profile, set my profile. You can repeat this profile for each profile. So, okay, it's asking me to make my environment variable AWS profile as my profile. All right, now since I got the answer from both ChatGPT and Google Bart, I'm just gonna put my profile in and see what happens. No oh, wait, too many arguments. Use the global change directory for the working directory. Okay, so Google Bard has failed me this time. So I'm just gonna use the uh, chat GPT example and see if that works. So I'm gonna storm and do a Terraform profile, or oh, Terraform plan. No, oh, that works. So in this scenario, chat GPT wins. Well, I guess because it's for the war, uh, the, in terms of responses, uh, that was won by Google Bard. But in terms of stuff that actually works, it, it was definitely chat GPT that won because it actually works. Now, last command that I want to run is Terraform apply and see what happens. Enter a value. Yes, I want this to happen, which which is fine. Uh, now, it's obviously gave me an error about an Amazon instant not being real. And that's fine because um, it is not real. It was just not supposed to be an example, but at least this proves to me that the car, the code that was written by Bart is, is enough to, to uh, if I had the right AWS credential, it would just work. I hope you're enjoying the video so far on the AI war between which one would be a better cloud player. I just wanted to take a quick moment for you to talk to people who are probably working on IAC on a day-to-day -day basis, specifically Terraform. If you are working with large amount of Terraform, you probably would have seen scenarios where you have a code error, but you don't know where to go for that particular error message. Now, if it is just one small file, you can probably use chat GPT or BART to resolve that problem for you. But when you are working for an enterprise or a large organization where you're working with hundreds of Terraform files, it can get quite difficult. And most likely you're looking for a solution to identify that really quickly, exactly to the line, which is the root cause of the problem you're facing. Now, if you are someone like that, you probably want to consider signing up for Sneak, which is also the sponsor of the video. I will leave a link in the description where you can find more information about this. And if you end up using the free product from Sneak, definitely let me know in the comment or through a DM. What do you think about the product and if you found it valuable as well? I would love to kind of share it with more people as well so at least others can find out that this is a beneficial product for them as well. All right, let's get back into the video. So far, we have been using the code from Google Bart and it seems to be working to an extent. And if I put the right credentials, it should just go ahead and just create and create the things that it needs to. Now let's do switch roles and see how far chat GPT code was get us. So I'm gonna quickly clean up over here. So I've moved my file and I can see that chat GPT is still there. So I'm going to move my chat GPT file to chat GPT dot TF. And because I've got the Terraform dot TF state, which is basically for people who don't know Terraform, this is the file that is used to remember what the state was. So every time you do an update, instead of just starting from scratch, it just only makes changes that it noticed was were made from the beginning. So I'm going to clean that up. So now I should only have two more files. I'm going to do just a bit more clear. Now I should only have two more files over here. All right. So let's do the same exercise, but this time I'm going to use uh, Terraform for the files created by chat GPT. So Terraform init. Oh, that works perfectly. If I can find the next command. Oh yeah, I've got the profile already set so I can just do Terraform. Wow, that seems to work as well. So it has known after apply, blah, blah, blah. Next one is Terraform apply for me. So I'm gonna bring that up. Oh, wow, that works instantly as well. Yeah, perfect. So we got the same error as before, which is understandable because the AMI ID provided is not the real one. So that works right. It's time for the final score for chat GPT versus Google Bart on creating AWS resources just using Terraform. Now for someone who did not know much about Terraform, 
well, I guess in this scenario, I was, I was becoming someone who was not much aware of Terraform. So I could use the 10 minutes that I was spending with each either BART or ChatGPT and learn the basic commands for Terraform using ChatGPT. I could also use the, the commands for writing a script for Terraform, which would produce an AWS instance. It did not really help me with the AWS configuration side, but if I were to spend a few more minutes on it, it definitely would have just helped fill that gap as well. So overall experience, I would say it's pretty good, but as a consolation uh, prize towards the end uh, for the final score, I would definitely say I must give an extra kudos point to, to Google Bart because the speed of response was just simply good. So if I were to just relied on Google Bart and if I knew how to do Terraform to begin with, if I was logging into Google Bart as a person who just knows Terraform but can't be bothered as a person who's trying to Google it, and if I just ask the question, hey, give me a Terraform script to just build an EC2 instance with an RDS in the back end and some security groups, it would have just done perfectly, I think. But this is just one of some of the scenarios. There are a couple more things that made me like Bart more. For example, if I typed in a question, I could just simply hit enter and it would just work in Bart. But in chat GPT, I had to hit shift enter. As a person who just wants things to just work, I would have thought shift enter would be more like I am just adding another line, but that, I mean, you know, that just could be my bias. So I would give that consolation prize. And considering the fact that there were some older information in chat GPT, I think chat GPT also deserves a 0.5. So I would show the overall score for this war on the screen. I would love to hear your scoring as well. If you feel this is the scoring that I gave for chat GPT and BART is justified, which one would you take? Would you work on BART or would you use Chat GPT, which is clearly more popular right now than its rival, which is Google Bart. And if you're someone who enjoys content like this, and because we talk about cloud security all day, every day on this channel, definitely consider liking and subscribing the video so we know what kind of content you enjoy. And if you have any questions or how else would you use Chat GPT or AI in general to do better in your cloud job, definitely leave us a comment and we can make a video for your question or look out for another video that we do in the future for how you can learn more about cloud and cloud security so you can be better at your job. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Oh my God, did I just do the whole thing without recording?